That is nasty. All snare sounds should be treated equal. I don't really agree with that. Especially uh, all you snare wire chokers. I see you, I see you, choking your snare out. So I've had a couple of comments on this channel throughout, you know, making videos where people have asked if I could make a snare tuning video. And to be honest with you, I've kind of shied away from it because, yeah, I, I'm not very specific when it comes to tuning. I don't really fine tune and stuff like that. I kind of just tweak till I like the sound or I hear the sound I'm looking for. But you know, I figured while I have to replace my bottom snare skin, that I'll share some ideas and maybe it will help. So yeah, let's get stuck in. So the first thing I'm gonna do is obviously remove my destroyed bottom skin. So here's a little tip. I think it's good to keep your hoop on your drum the way you left it, so not always be changing it. So then the drum kind of sits in the same spot. So I'm just gonna check here. So this is where this lug was, and I'm gonna use that as a reference when I put it back on. I'm not very anal when it comes to cleaning the inside of drums and stuff like that. I kind of might just rub over it with a towel, really, because because I play a lot of rim shots, my drums tend to just get covered in stick shavings. So that is the, the reason I need to, if, if, if I didn't rim shot, I don't think I'd even bother to do this. But yeah, I'm just gonna rub along the side. Boom, we're good to go. Now, not gonna do anything crazy in case I break the skin, which would be an absolute nightmare. And this is the last thing I want today. I wanna get this on and get recording. Do a little go around, some tissue, because there's a lot of buildup of junk right now. All right, that seems pretty good. I remember where I left it, it was here. Sick. Boom. Also, when you're taking off your hoop, try and place it where the lugs stay on. It just saves you a lot of time and effort. I've seen people before and they'll like leave their, their drum with the lugs like all on the floor and it's, I don't get it. I would not have the patience to do that. So there's a tip for you. Make sure you put it down carefully so all the lugs stay where they're at. Just saves you some time and makes, you know, means that you won't really dread putting on a skin because of your time consuming practices. So what we're gonna do now, which is a pretty common thing, well it's, I mean, everyone does it, but you know, they do it for a reason, which is finger tighten the lugs. So I like to slap around it like that. Some lugs won't be as oiled up as others, unless you put something on them, but I, I don't really put anything on my lugs. I know some people put oil and WD-40 and stuff like that, or other people do mad stuff, like put on like some adhesive, or I don't know. I've heard all sorts of things. I don't do any of that stuff ever. Um, really just because I haven't experimented with it. But uh, it could be interesting. But I think the, the WD-40 sounds weird to me because it seems like the drum would go out of tune easier. Again, if anyone has any tips on that kind of stuff, let me know. I might be totally wrong. So you see here, it could be good for this lug here because I can't move it around. It's kind of stiff. So maybe that's actually going to affect the tune. And so I may be wrong about that. So I have kind of a feel for the drum now where I can actually feel where I've finger tightened it with the drum key. So here's a really good tip for you. Because uh, if you purely finger tighten, it can be very time consuming. I like to do that flick around kind of technique on a lug if I can. But what you want to do is gently just turn the key. And you'll reach a point where, yeah, you get a finger tight. So I'm kind of just like very loosely turning it with not much tension. And that's where you'll actually find the, you know, the point of finger tension. So I kind of just move around the, the key and then double check, yeah, 
it's finger tight. Perfect. So, great starting point there. So we're just going to go around the drum, doing a half turn. And we're just going to do this kind of cross motion. This technique can be a bit weird at first, but the more you do it, the more you get a knack for it. So I'm just kind of following the drum. And here's something I like to do. Often when you tighten the side of the drum, another part will go kind of loose. So I kind of make sure as I'm going around each that I have a finger tight. So yeah, that's finger tight. Here even, double check, boom. And now I'm back to the start. I'm gonna do another, boom, boom. We should be good now, finger tight wise. I don't think any lugs are gonna start going crazy on us now. And I'm really not specific on the bottom head at all. Maybe to my detriment, but I'd, I just like to uh, tune it up pretty high. So the reason you wanna tune your bottom skin pretty tight is to get the response of the snare wires. So here's something I want you to practice next time you're tuning. Start to feel the key in your hand and be able to replicate the exact turn you've just made. So I'm doing these really small turns right now, just around the, the skin to bring it even. So I'm doing these tiny turns, but if you look, they seem pretty, even, you know? And this just because I'm starting to feel a lot of tension on the skin and I don't want to accidentally break it. Again, I think this isn't the case with a lot of drums, but whatever about this snare, I've had issues with the bottom head, so I'm just being a bit extra careful today. So I've tightened up the bottom skin pretty tight. Now it's not insane, insane tight, but it, it is, uh, it's pretty up there. So we're, we're gonna see how this feels with the top head. But the first thing we're gonna do now is throw on the snare wires. So here's a technique that I kinda use to put on the wires. Now I've kinda developed this over the years just by trial and error. And I'm sure there is drummers that do this, but yeah, this is just the way I like to do it. So what I do is I like a lot of wiggle room with my wires. So I like to be able to crank up my wires, but also have them nice and loose. And often I find I'll put on wires and they'll either be super tight to the point that no matter how far I go back uh, with my throw off, the wires will still be super, super tight. So what I like to do is loosen them here and then I'll loosen the trough off even more. So now when I put on my wires, it's gonna give me a ton of wiggle room when it comes to adjusting my wire tension. We have our wires, we've thrown our throw off off completely, and we've loosened it up a bit to give us as much wiggle room as possible. And now what we're gonna do is feed in our wires. I loose, loosen these off finger tight. Oh, be careful you don't lose the lug. So I've gone too far here. Boom, pull these off. And I'm gonna feed through these strings. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten this enough, but not too much where it's super tight. So there's still a little wiggle room for me to play with, so had these somewhat lined up. Now I'm gonna pull on the string on this side. So just like that, I'm gonna pull on it. Not crazy tight, but tight enough. Now we're gonna try and get these kind of even. That seems decent. And I'm just gonna tighten. Again, not fully, but most of the way there. So we already have our, our tension here, so we can pull on these a bit without, you know, bringing out the other end. So now I've got this pretty tight. Gonna slightly pull back here. Not too much, just a bit. And now, 
I'm hoping when I pull up, put on the throw off that I've got some nice wiggle room. So let's see. So now, so now if I put on the throw off, you'll see and my wires are super loose, but I'm gonna to start to tighten it here on the throw off. And you'll see I've got a lot of wiggle room. So I can have my wires tight. Even tight, let's go really tight. I can have them really tight, but also I can have them super loose. So I really like that because I'm able to dial in exactly what tone I want. So maybe I'm playing a, a song where I want a, a kind of slow snare sound. Do, boosh, you know? Boom, 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 boom. You know, I'm playing a slow tune where I want that sustain from the wires or I want to tighten it up. Now, you're hearing the ring of the drum too. I'm going to mute it a bit. And then, if we want to go more sustain. Whoa, crazy sustain here. Obviously, that's the really extreme end of the spectrum. Let's go a bit more. So there's a but 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 a song I just made up. But if we want to go, I'm a rock and roll, rock and rock and we have the tight sound. So there's my tip for strainer ascendance. That is how you ascend life in the strainer world. Okay, so I've already got my batter head on, but for the purpose of this video, let's detune this baby. So again, I'm doing this with the key, which is a good technique to practice. So with the key, you just turn it and it should be finger tight if you do it loosely. So that's finger tightened. The snare stand. Sweet. Okay. We've got our snare stand. We've got our snare. We've got the bottom skin on. We're, we're feeling good about life right now. When I had no bottom skin, I was feeling down. I was feeling low. Now I got a bottom skin on. I know my snare is going to sound good. I'm happy. All right. So, because we have our rezzo pretty tight, you'll actually hear just finger tight, the drum sounds good. Oh, this stick is completely destroyed. So this is actually a sound I sometimes use. I will completely loosen the drum and just get this super fat sound. So if any of you out there have seen my cover of Driver's License, I, I, I use this technique. I actually tune the drum down as low as it can go and played it like that. And you get this super deep sound. But of course you gotta dial in the, the bottom head right. You gotta have it, you know, pretty tight and the, the tension of the wire is right. And what you can do to dial this in is use different dampening. So even at, at this, with just finger tight, you can get some pretty cool sounds. Throw on an old snare skin. You get a really, really fat snare. Throw on, you know, something on the drum, preferably a wallet and not your phone. And you get a different sound. So that sounds really cool to me. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start making these tiny key turns because I like to get a bit more specific obviously when it comes to the top skin. So again, 
I'm going around in this cross formation, not having to be super accurate, but just making sure I turn all the lugs. I'm actually noticing, now that I have a new skin on the bottom, I'm getting a lot of brightness out of my drum that I didn't have before, which is great, because I like to tune my snare quite low a lot of the time. But although we want a deep snare for certain songs, we still want that brightness, because the brightness is what makes the snare crack through the mix. So if you want a deep snare, it is good to have that brightness. That's why I love metal drums. This is a bronze drum, and I love the brightness and openness you get out of uh, metal drums. It just sounds great because you can tune them low, but still get that bite and crisp sound. So really what I just like to do on the snare is very, very small movements with the drum key. Again, this depends on your drum. Some drums, you can just go crazy with the tension and the drum won't respond that much. To either way, I like to move quite in a small movements. So this lug actually here has gone quite loose, so I'm actually gonna go a bit tighter on this one. So as I said, I do the small turns to keep the tension even, but sometimes that's not enough. So I'm gonna tighten that up a bit. So you'll hear now, I've got a really nice crisp snare sound. There's some tips on tuning the snare. Here, let's, let's play around here. I'm gonna play around with the tension of the wires. So now if I crank the wires ridiculously tight, you'll hear I'm gonna kill the snare sound. Oh. Oh. It sounds tin, it sounds weak. Whereas now if I dial in the wires, So a lot of fullness comes back into the drum when you've got your wires a bit looser. So you hear that low end? And now watch. The whole drum is choked, the low end is gone. Again, as I mentioned earlier, Loose wires, here to sustain. It gives your snare like a reverb tail. I really like that sound. Let's go even more extreme. And you just dial in the snare tone you want. So now let's go a bit tighter. So now I'm getting a tighter tone, but I'm still not choking the drum. But as I go a bit too crazy, Ugh. There you have it, when it comes to tuning your snare, I think some of the main things to take away are snare wire tension is everything, that determines the kind of snare tone you got, crank up the, the bottom head pretty high, because it works with low tunings, high tunings, medium tunings, works with all tunings. And then with the batter head, get comfortable with copying your keystrokes. That sounds weird, but I think that's a good way of describing them, is their, their keystrokes. So it's a technique. You get used to making these exact motions, as opposed to just like, okay, I turned that a bit and I turned that a bit. You're copying your motions. And then also getting a feel for the actual tension of the drum. So a lot of time you can feel, okay, this lug is a lot looser than the other one, and you might want to tweak that. Please do remember that snare tone and all sound is personal preference. There's no such thing as a good sound or a bad sound when it comes to, to drums or music. It's what sound you're looking for. I mean, all right, St. Anger snare. I think that's a good snare sound. I'm sorry. It's, it's unique. It has a vibe to it. It's a cool sound. So all snare sounds should be treated equal. I don't really agree with that. Especially uh, all you snare wire chokers. I see you, I see you choking your snare out. So yeah, there, there's my hot take. 
Snare wire chokers are worse than St. Anger snare. Oh, I said it. Oh, I said it.